السلام عليكم For this session, uh, we will start with first aid for bone and joint injury. So we will cover uh, the bone and joint injury. Uh, the objective for this session. باقي شيء ما بنتهم The objective for this session We will enumerate and describe the type of injury Bone injury uh, Determine what to look for And when to call 9999 And what to do until help arrive and also when carrying, when carrying for patient with an injury. Uh, we determine, <coughs> uh, demonstrate also, and describe the emergency treatment for strain, fracture, dislocation, including the realignment, and also strain and spin. So those are the objectives that we will cover in this session. <coughs> So, for the bone and joint injury, an injury of musculoskeletal system are among the most common injuries that we might observe. What are the, what might be the cause of those injuries? Falling down, so mostly either falling down or if something heavy fall in on a client or in case of car accident. So there are many causes of injury that might lead uh, to bone fracture or bone injury or uh, <coughs> so care mostly the same regardless to the excess the exact diagnosis or the exact cause of the uh, injury. We have what we call it the strain. What we mean by strain? Did you took the muscles, muscular system, in anatomy and physiology? How the muscular system, how the muscle is connected to the bone? Hmm? So there is fibers, tendon fibers that connect the muscle to the bone in order to do the movement of the bone. So when, so, and the muscle is consist, composed from those fibers also and toward the end, it is connected with the bone. So if we overstretch the muscle, the overstretching, what might it lead? It might lead to damage or cutting of some fibers. So in this case, what we call it? We call it strain. So it's strain, Strain, it is damage to the muscular fiber or over due to overstretching of the muscle or the thin. Sprain are injury to the ligament which holding the bone together. Did you go talk the joint? So the joint, it is formed from either two or more than two bones, and it is connected, connecting those bones together with some ligaments. So here the strain, it is overstretching of the muscle fiber and overstretching of the ligament or tendon that 
connect the muscle to the bone but here there is a ligament which connect the bone to the bone so the sprain it is overstretching of those ligament that cause damage to the or injury to the ligament that hold the bone together so did you def can you differentiate now between the strain and sprain both of them they are in the <coughs> here it is called the tendon which is at, coming at the end of the muscle and connecting it to the bone <coughs> and here it is on the ligament the ligament which is connection to connect the both bone together so the injury it is there <clears throat> so bone and joint injury there is what we call it fracture fracture it is breaking down of the bony tissues so this a fracture is a bone break or chips or a crack there are many types of bone uh, of bone injury or fracture we can classify them to open fracture and closed fracture what is the difference between open fracture and Closed fracture. Both there are, in both there is broken bone. In both, this is the commonality that the bone is broken. But the difference in closed fracture, the skin and the tissues which is around is still covering the bone. So it is a closed fracture so the tissues which is over that side it is still intact still covering the that part because of that it's, we call it a closed fracture the open fracture it is a fracture plus injury of the tissue that cover the bone and sometimes you see the bone is coming outside so the part of the bone it might come outside this is called an open fracture right. which is more dangerous okay. why it is more dangerous what is the maybe, the difference maybe we will uh, maybe we have an infection yes so the danger here is that that when the the tissue is the tissue is open, it means it is open for contamination with microorganism or other, any other thing. So the possibility for infection it is more. So which one is in need for more care? Open. The open fracture it is in need on of more care, and also an open fracture. So see there is damaged tissues there is maybe blood vessels also might be cut so bleeding also might be there external bleeding might be there also so there are many consequences <clears throat> the closed fracture it is the most common one open one is more dangerous as we see There is another thing which is coming with the bone and joint, which is that dislocation. What we mean by dislocation? So the placement of the bone is moving from it is socket from the joint. In each joint, there is a position for each bone when the bone is moved from that socket or from that 
that joint or the site that is allocated or that joint together, in this case it is called dislocation. So dislocation is movement of the bone or joint away from normal position. It is often include tearing of ligament. We said that each joint it is formed from bone and ligament that connect the bone together. So when there is a tear of the ligament, the bone is not connected well in this case. And it's not fixed well because of that it might move from the it is site of connection. So it is called dislocation. And you will see in this case there is in all fracture also deformities might be there. So the shape will look different of the organ because of the changes in the anatomical variation that's happened. Okay. <clears throat> so this is one type of fracture. Did you guess which which part of the body this one? Mm -hmm. So it is yes, it is the hand. What we call this bone? Radius and on. So this fracture of radius of and on that is complete fracture of those two bone. As it seem, seems that it is a closed fracture, the tissues are not there, but there is also displacement of the bone. See? When the bone is broken, what will happen? The muscle by itself, it will contract. So the bone also might move from its place. Because of that, it, need, it has one of the things which is needed later, which is the, to return the bone to its normal position. There are many types of fracture. This is closed fracture. There is no injury fracture, but no injury. And the bone is still covered by the tissues. Here, it is an open fracture. See, the bone is coming out of outside. Multiple fracture, more than one fracture. Comminuted fracture. It is cut into small pieces. A green stick fracture. Green stick fracture, it is most common in children because the, their bone is still in it. The uh, percentage of water is, or fluid is high, so it is lenient. Because of that, it might be broken from one side, but it's still hang with the other side. Spiral fracture. It is like spiral one, like the screw. We call it spiral fracture. <clears throat> now, how we can differentiate if somebody fall or have an accident? After that, what we can see? What are the signs and symptoms that we can see? And in order to say that, this man or this woman may or might have uh, a fracture or strain or sprain. What are the signs and symptoms that might appear? Maybe swelling. Yes, so swelling of the site. The site of that has fracture. Swelling might be there. Change in the color, either it is red or due to the inflammatory process or due to the uh, might be blood bleeding is there uh, <coughs> what what other thing pain pain is there hmm? change in the shape or deformity what what other thing is 
also my breathing might be there. Uh, inability to inability, uh, which is loss of function. So loss of function of the or that limb if it is uh, has a fracture. So we there is what we call it the dots from the signs and symptoms. Dots, these stand for deformity. So the shape will be changed due to the fracture. So we will look for any deformities in order to say that he might have fracture or not. Or for open injury. If there is an open injury. T for tenderness. Do you know what's the meaning of tenderness? Tenderness. Tenderness, it means pain on touch. So, usually when we touch our body part, there's no pain. But when there is pain, when we touch any a part of our body, we call it a tender area, tenderness. Swelling. Swelling, which is due to accumulation of fluid in the side. So it will be swollen. So this is what we call it dots. So that's D for deformity, O for open injury, T for tenderness, S for swelling. Moderate or severe pain or discomfort at least bruising sometime may take hours to appear sometime inability to move or to use the affected area so loss of function he is unable to if it is in the hand he will not be able to move the hand he has to support it Especially if it is the two points, like that. Uh, broken bone or fragment sticking out, if it is an open fracture, so the bone might be seen out. Feeling or hearing sound of movement, so when we try just to touch or to support the, that part, we might hear some sound, which is due to friction of the two tip of the fracture of the bone. <coughs> so this uh, <coughs> this sound it can be heard. It might lead to loss of circulation, sensation, and motion. When it might lead to loss of, of circulation, when there is either cut to the blood vessels or compression on the blood vessels, if it is compressed on the blood vessels, sensation it means that the nerve is affected, motion, both the muscle, the bone, the movement it has uh, to have three integrity of the bone, muscle, and bone, muscle, joint within the, and nerve, the nerve. If the bone and muscle is, is there, but there is no nerve impulses is coming, the nerve which supply that area, it is cutted or we call it paralysis. So the person, he will not be able to move that part. Even the muscle are there and the bone are there, is are there. <laughs> but he will not be able to move. So it needs the intactness of the bone, muscle, and the nerve. <coughs> Checking for possible bone or joint injury, we have, if 
any person is injured. The first thing, as we said, the general assessment that we have to do for him in case of any accident. If he fall down, if he, after a car accident, we have to assess that person for generally. The first thing, usually what we did, we see the consciousness. Then if he is conscious, he is able to breathe, we will look for bleeding, we will look for other injury or uh, wound or uh, fracture. So we have to sit the patient at rest in a comfortable position, remove the clothes as necessary according, and sometimes no need to remove the clothes even uh, from that part. Just we will fix the uh, immobilize, we, this is at the site as a first aid. We will do immobilization of the site uh, uh, of the uh, patient or the limb of the patient at the edge. So remove clothing as necessary to check the injury. So this is for assessment. Ask how the injury happened, what's happened to you? Did you fold, did you uh, <coughs> hold your hand while you are, uh, or uh, support yourself by your hand or during uh, falling or what ha happened to you? Is something uh, fall on you? In which part do you feel the pain? So ask how the injury happened and what area that hurt the patient that he is having pain on. Visually inspect the <coughs> entire body and compare both sides together with each other in order to see if there is any deformity. So we will see the symmetry, we will see the <coughs> uh, symmetry in shape of both sides, of both limb, both side of the chest, both side, <coughs> so both sides of the body to look for difference and feel the dots as we said, the deformities. <coughs> Checking for possible strain or sprain, also we have the patient actively move the joint to evaluate being involved. So for strain and sprain, we will try to see if the patient is able to move the joint or not. If pain is there, don't let him to move the joint. If swelling is there, so we have to start with dealing with it as if it is a strain or a sprain, regardless to what is it. Manipulate the joint with our hand, we can see just, but if the signs are clear, if there is swelling and don't do, don't manipulate. So, and evaluate the pain. If the joint appear usable, have the patient to test his, uh, to test it with his or her weight. If it is, if there is nothing apparent. If the patient is look normal after the accident, if there is no swelling, no pain, in this case, we can test the function of the joint. This is from the assessment. If you remember the first, in the first session, how we did the assessment. <coughs> we have to check also for the possible fracture, determine whether the injury part look broken from deformities <coughs> and compare it to non-injured side. Ask the patient whether he or she think it is broken. Usually the person, if he is conscious, he know that. Yes, I feel that my hand is broken. I feel that my leg is having fracture. So according to what he feel, he will tell you the expectation. So ask the patient whether he or she think that he has broken 
and then gently touch the injured area to look for the patient reaction to touch if there is any tenderness with the muscle appear to be in sprain or not if injured area seems unstable unstable that the movement of it yeah, it means that the bone is uh, or the joint is not fixed well so the movement it is abnormal movement on spot heart uh, noticeably more than the rest check the beyond the site of the injury also about if we discover that the person is having strain or strain or fracture what we have to do in general so generally we have to give the care as it is abbreviated as rice what what's rice <laughs> It's not biryani. <laughs> so rice, it is the abbreviation of rest. So the care for, or the first aid for uh, a fracture or sprain or strain, it is the rice, which is rest. R, it stands for rest. So don't allow the injured area to be used for at least half an hour, we have to keep it at rest. Immobilization, the I stands for immobilization. So we have to fix it in a position. You have to use bandage, you have to use splint in order to prevent mobility of that part. So prevent the fracture or injury by keeping injured area still, not moving by using splinting. So we have to use splint. The C, it is for cold. So cold, use ice, would, will work best to avoid direct contact with the skin. We can use ice, but the ice, we should not put it directly over the skin. Always when we are using ice bag or ice, it has to be covered with a piece of a cloth. So hot and cold compresses, we should not use it directly over the skin. It has to be covered. Then E, it is stand for elevation. So, why rest? Because any movement, if there is fracture or if there is a, a, a sprain or strain, either it will aggravate the problem and the pain will be more. So, by rest, we will decrease the pain. Immobilization also, by that, we are preventing further injury and also decreasing the pain. Cold, what's the effect of cold? Reduce the pain. It, it will reduce also reduce. the pain. And it will reduce the consumption or the metabolism of the cells. Elevation, why we ele elevate the, the limb if it is no. a limb? Why elevation it is important? To reduce the amount of blood. To reduce the blood supply to the area and to encourage the backflow of fluid to the circulation. So by that, we will reduce the possibility of edema. And also cold, cold application, it will reduce the 
blood supply to the area it will lead to constriction of blood vessels so leakage of fluid it will be less the leakage of fluid from the blood vessels to the tissue it will be less so did you understand the mechanism of those things how, why we are using them and how they are working <clears throat> so this is what we call it the rise the rest we are keeping it the limb at rest immobilization by using bandage or uh, piece of uh, wooden piece or sometimes we are using uh, journals or any available thing that can be used to support the limb and using of cold compasses or cold bag nowadays there are what we call it the ready uh, or chemical cold bags it is a chemical substance that it has some gel inside just either you will put it in the, fri the uh, freezer and taking it uh, out when you take uh, it outside it will remain uh, longer time cold or sometimes there are chemi some chemical substances in uh, a bag that when you move them a chemical reaction will happen and it will induce Coldness. None. Yeah, that that the uh, effect of cold it will reduce the sensitivity of the nerve ending at that area. So the pain it will be less. The feeling of pain it will be less. <coughs> and elevation there is a big. See, they are putting a below under the patient leg, under the victim. So, rest, immobilization, cold, and elevation. Those are the main things that we are using in the treatment of bone joint injury. Splinting. In remote area, patient will likely need to be moved from that area to the hospital or anyway, really. even it is not easy to move the person to the hospital even if he is nearby uh, while he is having the fracture and the limb is lag. So the splint should restrict the movement to prevent further injury and increase this it, it will increase the comfort the splint must be made of something to bad the injury and rigid enough to provide support so it should be lenient not tough but also it should be hard in order to support that area how it will be not tough and and hard at the same time so we might use a wooden piece but it is wrapped with a cotton or with piece of cloth <coughs> it might be metal but the shape of it it is shaped that it will not cause injury and it take the shape of the uh, the body so banding should fill in the space to help to prevent movement also in our body part there are some curves so those curves should be supported by some pieces of either cotton or uh, gauze or uh, piece of cloth in order to keep the, the, the supported well possible splint material include branches it might be a branch of from a tree magazine uh, it can be uh, even a towel a wrapped towel so whatever we have we can we have to manage with the thing which is available 
in first aid. We are not in our hospital. We are away from the hospital. So we will use whatever we can, we can have from that area. But it should not be a harmful thing. Use triangular bandage. Triangular bandage, mostly it can be made easily from any piece of cloth. If it is a square one, just we will fold it, the angles of it together. By that, it will become an, a triangular bandage. The bottle mutella. <clears throat> Using tape, elastic wrap. Those, we are using it to secure the split. When a <clears throat> triangle bandage can be the head cover, either for the men or for the women, it's the same, or any piece of uh, bed sheet can be used as a triangular bandage, <clears throat> and it can be used for dabbing, and we will show you how to, how to use it and uh, in that different side of the body. So the splitting material, we can use sleeping bags, sometimes as splitting material. Bed sheet can be used as a splitting material. Extra clothes. Bed sheet? Sure, sure, it's Bed sheet. It's called bed sheet. The cover that we are using it on the table. Extra clothes, even any piece of the clothes can be used. Soft wooden stick, rolls of sterile dressing, <coughs> also it can be used. Splinting, when splinting, we have to prepare the splinting material before starting. Uh, a trip. So, in, if you are going for a picnic or for a trip, it's better to have something, some first aid kit with you. You don't know, especially if you are going uh, away or to uh, uh, climbing mountains, or you have to be ready for any unexpected event. So. You have to have some splint with you. Splint must be able to hold the injured natural, neutral position. Splint also in line that uh, the small, uh, the small of the back, so it has to be uh, splinted. Legs almost straight, splint, but behind the knee. Feet, in the feet we are using usually right angle splint. Zawiqaim. Arm flexed to cross the heart when we are using it on the arm. Usually we are using the arm across the chest like this. Hand in a fracture curve with bedding of the bar. <coughs> if the person is having shoes, do we have to remove the shoes or to keep the shoes on? Keep it. It's better to keep it. Uh, unless if there is an injury inside, because it, it is used as a splint also. So it is used for for support. So leave the shoes on the foot. It can act as a splint and remove if circulation is an issue. When we will remove it, we will remove it if it affect this. If it is constricting on the circulation, if there is edema, yani when there is an injury, what will happen? Edema will be there. So the size of the body organ will be more when edema is there. So because of that, it will, it might be compressing over the blood vessels and it will cause uh, interfere with the circulation. So in this case, we have to remove it. 
we have also to look at something in case of burn, in case of injury. If any ring is there, remove it as quickly as possible because if swelling is expected, in this case, we will not be able to remove it later. We have to cut it and sometimes it is difficult to reach it and cut it. The swelling, it might be more and you will see that the ring or the bangle is going inside the tissues. So remove it early before the swelling is coming up. So remove rings, bracelet, watch, or anything which is restricting or coming around the body or About the type of splint, we have three type of splinting. One of them which is the hard splint. Hard splint. Hard splint, it might be material which is rigid, like bullies, sticks, it can be metal, Sometimes it is a plastic one or fiberglass. There are some ready-made which is from fiberglass. It might be from a, mostly in a first aid we can use any piece of wooden piece. Just we will wrap it with uh, those or piece of cloth and use it as a, a rigid splint. We might use soft splint. If we didn't find a rigid splint, we might use soft splint. Splint material in soft like bulky newspaper. So we will wrap them together in order to at least have something that can support. Sleeping, sleeping bags also it can be wrapped and can be used. Bit sheet can be wrapped, and we will show you. Uh, wish, we will show you how we can use it. So this is we call it the soft split, which is more effective, the soft split or the hard split. The hard one, it will there will be no movement, but the soft split, there might be some movement even after split. The third one, which is called anatomical splinting. What we mean by anatomical splinting? We will use the body part, the, the non-affected body part, as a splint. Yani, if we take that one of the finger is having fracture, what we will see is do, we will wrap that finger with the fracture to the other finger, healthy one. So that finger, it will be used as a splint. When there is fracture of one of the leg, we will bind the two legs together. By that, because we didn't find anything. Shall we leave it hang? Yeah. So, in this case, what we will do, we will bind the two legs together. So the healthy one, it will be considered as splint for the other. For the hand also, we can use anatomical splinting. We will wrap it to the chest. By that, it is called anatomical splinting. So finger tied together, legs splinted together, tied together, and also the hand it can be splinted <coughs> or wrapped to the chest. So did you understand the difference between soft, hard, and anatomical splinting? The hard, we are using hard material, either it might be metal, it might be 
uh, wooden pieces, it might be uh, plastic or fiberglass or whatever we can uh, find. The, sometimes there are some badded aluminum uh, parts that uh, aluminum splint. <coughs> uh, soft splint, it is can be newspaper, it can be any piece of cloth, any uh, bed sheet. Anatomical, we are using the body part and binder that we will bind uh, or use the bandage and bind the part of the body uh, which is which has the fracture with the uh, healthy one. <coughs> so this is one of the splinting. So they are using piece of wooden piece. And here they are using also some pieces of cloth. Might be a serpent, might be a triangle bandage, any piece of cloth. And here, see, they are using a bandage at the, in order to flow, to give more rest and to keep the position properly. Uh, anyway, in case of fracture for bitter splinting, we have to fix the joint before and joint after. So, fix the joint before and the joint after in order to prevent movement of the fracture site. If we are fixing one joint only, so the other joint will be more when it is moved in this case the fracture it is not supported well <coughs> see here they are using soft splint it is a piece of bed sheet or uh, blanket they are wrapping it around the, the leg and wrapping it with uh, bandage. Here, anatomic, anatomical uh, splinting, they are preparing the uh, binder in order to bind the two legs together for uh, splinting of the leg. <laughs> this is a first air, aid action. It is a temporarily. It is not a permanent. So a temporary action until we reach the hospital. In the hospital, they are using either back slab or uh, complete plaster of Paris. Or, so the action, it might be uh, reduction, surgical reduction, either internal reduction or external reduction. So there are many cases. Or internal fixation, sometimes they are using bends and screw blades and screw. This is some hard splint. They are using it. Or soft splint. This is binding the two legs together. And they are putting something here in between in order to fill the gaps between the legs. So applying splinting has support the injured arm above and below the site of the injury. Place the triangular bandage under the arm and cover the un in injured shoulder. This is for how to use the shoulder. As a point, it will not show you properly. I will show you uh, as practice and you will practice it. Wrap the outside of the bandage around the other side of the neck and tie the side to the neck and uh, do bending. Bend the arm to torso or to the uh, body with the folded bandage and check also the circulation uh, <coughs> below the hand. So this is how the arms bending. I will show you uh, in practice how we are uh, splinting. So,
Now, when we have to call for emergency, for help, if there is obvious deformity, we have to pull. Moderate or severe swelling and dislocation, or discoloration, sorry, change in the color. In this case, we have to pull. Bones sound. So, when any movement, when you try to move the person, you hear the click. Feel like they are rubbing together. So, in this case, we have to call. A snap or bob was heard or felt at the time of the injury. If the person told you that, I heard some pops or sound uh, when I fall. An open wound with bone pieces through the injured side. An open wound regardless if there is a fracture or no fracture. We have to call. We have to transfer the person to the hospital. Injured person cannot move the affected part normally. Injured area is cold or numbness is there. Numbness. He feels that tenemul, yes. Anan, khadran. This is called numbness. Because it, in this case, it means that the, the nerve is affected. Injuries involve the head or neck or spine. In those kind of injury, it need a special consideration. We have to use to fix the neck before moving the vehicle. Otherwise, he will have uh, paralysis. Injured person has trouble with the breathing. Any person with trouble with breathing or difficulty in breathing, we have to call. It is not possible to <coughs> safely or comfortably move the person to a vehicle or transport to hospital. Whenever it's difficult to take the person to the car or the vehicle that you have, you, we have to ask for help. What to do until they arrive? We have to keep the person at rest. Don't move uh, or <coughs> straighten the injured area. We have to immobilize, stabilize the injured area with the position it was found. Called uh, for a period for about 20 minutes. So we have to place a cold compresses for about 20 minutes. Uh, place a thin bird uh, uh, between the eyes and the bear's, uh, bear skin. So we have to uh, put a cloth in between. Elevate the injured part only if it does not cause more pain. The, the elevation, if we feel that the elevation it will cause pain, in this case, we will keep it as it is. Splint the injury using the split. So those are the things that we have to use it before. Uh, this is this location here, see the bone is out of the side, of, out of the joint. So deformities will be there. See. Here is out of the second. This is the socket that it has to be fixed with it. This part, it has to be here. See? In it. Here, if there is a force coming like this sometime, in this case, it might injure the uh, that force will come over the uh, ligaments here and it might uh, lead to uh, keeping it up. Checking and caring for dislocation. Dislocation will be uh, will reduce pain in the joint and loss of function and motion. Joint look uh, it will look wrong. You will see that swelling is there and 
it, it is abnormal if you are comparing it with the other joint, normal joint. Many dislocation can only be splinted in the field. So in the field, what you can do, just splint it, put a cold compressor, and transfer him to the hospital. Some can be put it back by realignment. Putting back by realignment, it need an expert person. So if you are not expert, don't try to do anything. Just fix it and transfer him to the hospital through a process called reduction. We call it reduction. And reduction also it is painful because of that when they are, even if they are doing a close reduction, they will give first analgesia, then they will do the reduction because the reduction they will try to take it to its place. So this is about the bone uh, injury. Uh, the uh, next session, inshallah, we will uh, do it uh, as a practice. So we'll show you how we will fix, how we will use the triangular bandage, how we will use the uh, soft splint, how we will use the hard splint in uh, reality and uh, how it can be fixed. Thank you. Good question. PIS 11.